He's charging. Oh, <laughs> coming. Hey everybody, welcome to Culturosity. Please let me know if I completely butchered that. I'm still trying to learn Vietnamese and the pronunciation is pretty tough, I think. Today I want to take you on a journey through Vietnam and show you my top 10 favorite foods that I recommend uh, when I traveled there. So some of these you'll probably know like pho, but I tried to include a few that most people don't know about or that I found um, that were newer foods. So. Um, hoping you guys get to try these at some point. Um, and yeah, one recommendation before I get started is I really think that you should learn some of the language before you go. Vietnamese is fairly easy to read because it uses the Latin alphabet, so um, that's from the French colonial times. And the hardest part is probably just the accents and all the different vowels. There's so many different vowels in Vietnamese and there's six different tones, so that's a little bit harder to, to figure out, but you don't have to get it perfect at first. Once you are aware of what to look for, it'll start coming to you more naturally. And I think it's really important to learn the language anywhere you go so that you can connect deeper with the culture. So guys, I'm getting pretty hungry. So let's go taste some of my favorite Vietnamese foods. Zao mung, or hollow heart vegetable. All right, first off we have Zhao Meng, pronounced with a Z sound in the north, and Rao Meng, with more of an R sound in southern Vietnamese. This one is a favorite of mine, and I know it from Chinese cuisine, where it's known as Kong Xin Cai, which literally translates to hollow heart vegetable. And you'll see that this is the case because each of these vegetable stems is hollow, giving it this cool, crunchy texture. It's usually made with a ton of garlic, making it super tasty and I think it's good enough to be a main dish. Generally, this costs around 45,000 to 65,000 Vietnamese dong, which turns out to be roughly 1.9 to 2.8 US dollars. Many of you know that Vietnamese cuisine has lots of herbs and veggies, but I was happy to find that there's lots of cooked veggie options as well. And I love eating a ton of vegetables during my trips because it's healthy, but it also makes me feel better. Ban Chang Nung, or crispy Vietnamese pizza. This one was an interesting one and I had never heard of it before I came to Vietnam. And this snack is called Ban Chang Nung. It's what some refer to apparently as a Vietnamese pizza, but maybe, I think pizza is an Italian ban chang nung. Anyways, outside of one of our Airbnbs, we met this lady making this on the street who was very friendly and excited to talk to us and seemed willing to help practice my Vietnamese. This little snack is super cheap at around 10,000 dong or around 43 cents for each of these light tasty pancakes. I could eat so many of these. On the base, she grills up crispy rice paper and then tops it with quail eggs, dried meat, green onions, and several other ingredients that I couldn't figure out. At the very end, she drizzles it with some mayo and it's just such a nice combination of flavors and textures. Also, my friend doesn't eat meat, so if you're a vegetarian and you want to try this as well, don't be afraid. You can just tell her, hum tit and it'll taste just as good. Mm -hmm. 
bún bò Huế or beef noodle soup from Huế. This next one might be one that you're more familiar with. Bún bò Huế. Bún translates to rice noodles. Bà means beef and Huế is the city from which the dish originated. When we visited Huế in central Vietnam, I had the full Bun Ba Hue experience. Hue was the old capital of Vietnam before Hanoi during the Nguyen dynasty from 1802 to 1945, and it's the location of the Forbidden City, modeled after the Forbidden City in Beijing, China. After exploring the palace and biking around the town a little bit, we stopped by the nearby Dong Ba market. I saw an elderly woman on the side of the street brewing a giant pot of broth over an open fire with a huge basket of rice noodles and herbs next to her. The broth is slightly spicy and sour and packed with a savory flavor. With thick rice noodles, meatballs and meat patties, and lots of fresh herbs, it's soothing and fresh. Typically, blood cakes are also served in the broth, so if you want the full experience, now you know what to expect. Ban bèo, or savory rice cakes. Continuing with the foods from Hue, also originating in the former capital is ban bèo. It's served in these cute little cups and commonly eaten as a snack, and you can probably see why. It's light and tasty, but what makes ban bèo stand out for me is its presentation. The dozens of little cups are filled with steamed rice and tapioca flour and topped with shrimp or meat. Paired with chilies, nook mum, a sweetened fish sauce, garlic, and other savory toppings, I plowed through 20 of these little cups in a few minutes and was still hungry. Bò la lốt, or beef wrapped in beetle leaves. Another food I didn't really know about before singing in the street vendors and eventually in nice restaurants was bò la lốt. Bò, again meaning beef in Vietnamese, and la lốt, referring to the leaves known as beetle leaves in English that wrap around the minced beef. Probably because of its shape, it reminded me of the stuffed Mediterranean or Arab grape leaves. But I love the combo of this herby vegetable around the meat, which was full of flavor and also healthy because it also comes with all the fixins of lettuce, herbs, and other veggies. From the street stall vendor to specialty beef restaurants, this tasty dish can be found all around Ho Chi Minh City and probably all around the country. Pair this or any other food with some cà phê sữa đá, which is Vietnamese iced milk coffee, or some xin tou, which are the really refreshing smoothies, and you'll have an amazingly satisfying meal. And of course it makes the list. Being the icon of Vietnamese cuisine worldwide, pho. Pho is so iconic and probably the first Vietnamese food that foreigners learn about. I remember being addicted to the salty cinnamon and anise spice soup flavor and how affordable it was when I first had it in the US. It is also a staple of the Vietnamese diet, but typically it's eaten more for breakfast. I didn't have too much of it on this trip, but my favorite pho was the first meal I had in Hanoi at a street side stall. I definitely recommend getting it from the smaller shops so that you can get a true taste of the authentic flavor instead of at the chain restaurants, which taste mostly like they do in the US or in other countries outside Vietnam. Goi Du Du or Papaya Salad. Next up, Papaya Salad or in Vietnamese, Goi Du Du. 
Goi translates to salad and dudu is an awesome word meaning papaya. Originating from the ethnic Lao people, this dish is pervasive in Southeast Asia, especially Thailand, Laos, and Vietnam. I wasn't crazy for this cold, unripe papaya dish at first, but after eating it several times, I found myself craving it uncontrollably. Besides being light and healthy, it is also extremely tasty with garlic, basil, chilies, fish sauce, vinegar, peanuts, and shrimp or meat. It's another one of these plant-heavy dishes that is super healthy, but also fresh and tasty, and could definitely make a full meal for me if the portion size is big enough. Bunziu, or crab vermicelli noodle soup. I can understand pho's popularity due to its inviting and unoffensive flavor that anyone can appreciate, but bunziu is packed with flavor, specifically crab. The soup is tomato based and topped with crab and usually pork, but the soup itself is infused also with a seafoody deep crab flavor. The combination of, in of the ingredients produces so much umami and it makes it so simple to drink up all of the broth. So if you're looking for a noodle soup with more flavor and you like seafood, this is definitely the dish for you. Now this one's kind of cheating because it wasn't just one dish. I squeezed three really tasty dishes into one item. They have fresh fruit juices, just like most places in Vietnam, but it was the food that really stood out to me. Here we have fried fish and tomato sauce or this was absolutely delicious with meaty fresh white fish smothered in a fresh tomato sauce. I am a big fan of tomato sauce so I love this and I enjoyed the fact that it was on top of a lightly fried fish rather than being on heavy pasta noodles or dough which I'm more accustomed to from the west. Another favorite of mine was this dish that I actually don't remember the name of. It had such a cool texture and had all these little nodules protruding from the stems and there was this strong garlic flavor. If anyone has any idea what this vegetable is called, please let me know. I definitely want to try it again. Lastly, I got really excited when I saw this dish because I have fond memories of it from my childhood. In Vietnamese, it's called Thịt Kho, and it's this delicious caramelized soy braised meat and egg dish. I know this dish because there's a similar one in Chinese called Hong Shao Rou, which is also a caramelized pork and egg dish. The sauce that it's cooked in is probably one of the best pairings with rice ever. Chao ga. Chao ga is so simple, yet so delicious. Chao ga is a savory rice porridge with chicken in it. Chao refers to any kind of porridge and ga translates to chicken. For how amazing of a dish it is, I'm so glad that it's also equally as easy to make. With some rice, chicken broth, ginger, and onions, you can have the most amazing porridge that's perfect for breakfast or apparently hangovers. In northern Chinese cuisine, porridge is also a big staple, but it's usually eaten bland, and that's how I was used to eating it for most of my life. So I was conflicted when I had this savory, salty porridge for the first time. After a few times, I really grew used to it, and now I can easily say it's one of my favorite dishes. Throw aside the chicken soup, guys. Chao gia is where it's at. Jaga or turmeric and dill fish. Out of all of these foods, this one is definitely my favorite Vietnamese food of all time. Up until now, the previous foods that I've mentioned haven't been in any sort of particular order, but I did save the best for last. I love this dish for many reasons. One of them being that it uses turmeric and dill, which are not very common in Asian cooking. I also love its presentation. It's served on a hot plate that you cook yourself. Um, and it's just so healthy too with all the herbs and the fish 
It's such an amazing combination. I do have a word of caution. I was so excited about Taka that I saw this listed on a street vendor and immediately sat down and ordered one. At that time, I didn't know that this was Bun Chaka, which means something completely different. At that time, I didn't know yet that Bun refers to rice noodles. So when I received this bowl of rice noodle soup with some fish and a little bit of dill in it, I was definitely pretty confused. I still ate it up and it was delicious, but know that I'm fully recommending Chaka and not Bun Chaka. With so many things to eat in Vietnam, I definitely didn't cover everything and actually had one of my favorite meals inside of a cave. And if you guys are interested in hearing more about that, I'll have a video on that coming soon. This definitely wasn't a restaurant, it was more homemade and that made it so much better. Come on, what night? Thanks everyone for watching. Again, please let me know if I completely butchered that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you did. I also want you guys to leave a comment of your favorite Vietnamese food or something that you think I should try because um, I'm always looking to eat and um, find new foods. So please let me know. All right, I'll see you guys later. I'm Gap Lai.